This ball came to us very broken with missing large segments. I'm going to show how to construct the pieces of clay to supplement what's missing. I'm going to be using the slab roller. That's clay, makes it flat. Here's a piece of clay. I would have to smooth it to take the canvas marks off. I'm using a rib, a silicone rib to smooth it. And I'm slicing it to a segment. It's too thick. I'm going to show how to thin it out a little bit by smacking it on the bottom. Stretching it a bit. And here it is. Really, really thin. And for what it needs to be. I'm marking the uh, outline of where uh, we need to cut to make it fit into the segment that is missing. And you can see the marking there. I'm going to use a knife to cut this outline. And here it is, it should fit just perfectly. Let's try it. Although the clay is flexible, so if it's not perfect, you can smoosh it into place. It looks pretty good. Squeeze it into place. The metal in the back was constructed to give it the light, light, right support and curvature. I didn't mention that earlier. Here's the last piece pushed in. I'm using this line and let gravity fall in the right place. And I push it against the clay to mark where it needs to be cut. There are many techniques to cut the clay uh, in the right location. This one works. Cutting it where the mark is. And I'm slicing it. The reason why I'm slicing it, clay shrinks. This clay shrinks about 12 to 15% as it dries. And by segmenting it, it would dry the way it shows right now with some gaps. Um, I'm firing those pieces in the kiln. Here are the pieces fired now. It's hot clay and I'm going to place them one by one and it fits on the bottom pretty good but the gap isn't going to be there as you're going to see. I'm cementing them in place. Putting the metal back for support. Now it's cured and you can see the gaps. Uh, I'm gonna epoxy them in place. I'm gonna pour epoxy from the from the back side and I'm using the tape to contain the epoxy. Now that they've executed, I'm removing the tape. 
and it's ready for filler. Before I put the filler on, I'm using the drill just to remove the excess glue and flatten it a bit. The Dremel, uh, I'm using 220 grit and so is the sandpaper, right? I, I use it by hand, giving more control of surface continuity. Wiping it out with alcohol. This is PC11, two parts epoxy, filler, filler epoxy. It's 50-50 mix. Again, I'm filling up the gap. I'm using that same rib, the red rib, the silicone rib, to smooth the surface. I'm using the alcohol to clear off any PC epoxy that went to the area where I don't want it to be. You do it while the PC epoxy is still malleable and soft. Same thing in the back. Now we're filling all the gaps. Now that's typical Kintsugi process where we fill up the gaps, then we wipe it off with alcohol, leaving the PC epoxy filler only inside the gaps. Again, wiping it off with alcohol. I replace the cotton cloth often make sure that I don't leave smearing behind. That's the other half, same process. Wiping it off, let it cure, and then applying the Kintsugi process, and here it is finished. Thank you for watching.